And it's a new video series. Hello everyone, Monty here, Mark Iannis at IGUE. And this time around, we're starting one called Technical Cheat Sheet. What exactly does it entail? Well, we're looking at key technical indicators with the goal of formulating the technical overview. And that's because we need to ready those strategies, especially when you're a strategist, you don't want to be caught unprepared for when that technical overview holds, but also more importantly, for when it might fail. Let's face it, markets have a tendency to surprise us at times. And that means also getting the levels ready, both on a daily as well as a weekly time frame. And although this is technical, cheat sheet so it's really about technicals let's not forget that there are times where if it's something you know significant on the fundamental front it can throw a wrench into those technical levels and indeed into in, in, as well when it comes to technical indicators and the shorter term time frames overview and that means that we are going to take a brief look in terms of what to expect this week uh, for any given product that we're, uh, we're covering as well as where traders stand prior even though this isn't a full-on sentiment study video uh, who's up first euro usd and we're starting with a weekly time frame because as traders, you always want to start with the longer term time frame and then zoom into the time frame that you like to trade on. And to formulate an overview, it's very interesting to look at the key technical indicators. Uh, again, you might have some that you look at yourselves, but to look at it where it stands, in, in, and I've put six over here, price with respect to short term MA short, short term moving averages. This is for the weekly time frame, so short term weekly moving averages. And you can see that in this case that price is beneath them, but not when it comes to the longer term weekly moving averages, the 50, the 100, and the 200. You got a DMI, directional movement index, which I've plotted below. This is courtesy of uh, IG's trading platform. Negative, recent negative DMI cross, but not enough of a margin for the negative DI over the positive DI for us to say that it's bearish. You got your average directional movement index, which is well beneath trending territory, usually 20 to 25. And uh, you got the RSI relative strength index that's also in the middle as well as price when it comes to Bollinger Bands. So you look at that and you know most of these things are, are neutral. You're not much flickering red or green with the exception of price beneath the key uh, weekly moving averages and that means that overall you're looking at an overview that's a bit more cautious. I know there's some negative uh, technical bias in the shorter term which will be more apparent on the daily time frame which we'll get to but looking at it from the weekly time frame you want to say that it's consolidatory and maybe you want to add a little bit of caution even though we've had some pretty controlled moves on uh, intro week even after f some pretty significant uh, fundamental events. So uh, what does that mean from a, from a strategic standpoint? Here you've got two things. You've got the conformists, those who want to go with it, ex expecting this to hold, as well as those who say, no, this overview isn't going to hold, and that means that we're going to go contrarian. For the conformist, ideally selling, when it comes to first support, first uh, resistance and first support level, selling only after a significant reversal, So, or buying only after a significant reversal when it comes to the first support. And those of you who don't expect this to hold or don't expect these intra-week control, uh, controlled moves, you can go there for, for buy breakouts or sell breakouts and ideally targeting either uh, the second resistance for those who are buying off the first uh, resistance or targeting the second support for those of you who are selling off the first support. What about when it comes to levels? Again, this is for the whole week. So usually, you know, you don't need to revise them as you move along, but from the open to the first resistance or even the first support, 90 ticks. And it's a, it's a nice round number this time around, but usually it's not this round just because it's taken on an average of, of, of a number of sessions as well as roughly a 45 tick gap when it comes to the, the, the first level and the, the stop losses. Of course, you want to note price prior to any fundamental releases. So if price has reached the first resistance, for example, right before a significant fundamental event, say US CPI, uh, you remember market makers have a tendency to withdraw their liquidity right before the event. You're going to, you could, depending on the results, of course, you could get a big gap or a big move. And that means that you want to approach anything, these technical levels with, with, with more caution if price manages to reach there before the fund, fundamental event has even occurred. What about zooming into the daily time frame? Again, similar concept. We're going to take the six key indicators of price with respect to shorter term daily moving averages. Price is no longer beneath all of them, and that's because of that little recovery off the lows. It's very easy to shift uh, key technical indicators on shorter term time frames, such as you know if you zoom into the one hour, four hour, one second you're in overbought, the next second you're in oversold, and so on and so forth. But price is still beneath all its main long term daily moving averages. Although we're suffering a bit from price indicator as well as indicator indicator proximity because of how close price is, it's not going to take much for price to go above it, and that means it's very easy to, to you know to cause these these technical boxes to flicker. What about on the DMI front? It was bearish. I want to say the gap is not as high as it was before for, uh, for the negative DI over the positive DI, but of course that could change if price does make another move lower. You got an ADX that, depending on which calculation you're looking at, either in or close to trending territory, and an RSI and a Bond Japan that are both neutral, which again, at the start of last week, by the way, most of these were red. 
and you had a trending ADX. So it was very easy to classify it at the time as a bear average overview, but price indicator proximity, and this is the reason why at the time I didn't classify it on the daily time frame as a bear average or, or a bear trend or in, bear trend initializing. I realized there is a bear channel, a rough bear channel. I realized that there is negative technical bias. I'm not denying that, but a lot of times that means that you're looking at a overview that because of the more con controlled moves, especially intraday, for those of you that are looking to trade intraday, very controlled moves, but uh, um, at the end of the day, with more caution than you would get for the weekly because the levels on the daily time frame are far narrower. So that means that once again, because the overview is the same, conformist strategies and contrarian strategies are both the same. Uh, and the other thing to note is that when it comes to levels though, this is for the start of the week on Monday, you wanna raise that number from 37 to 40, if not above 40, depending on what's available that day in the anticipated volatility, you usually Thursdays or Tuesdays are going to be more volatile than say Mondays on average. And then you'll usually get more volatile moves as, or mini trend moves from Tuesday to Thursday on the FX front. Usually, not always. I know there are exceptions, but, but that's usually the case. So what about from a fundamental point of view? What are some of the things we got to brace ourselves? Those of you that on Tuesday, if you are putting in the levels for Tuesday, beware, you know, CPI releases then, it's a significant one. You got retail sales and more on Thursday. You got producer prices and U of M's uh, preliminary reading re re for consumer sentiment, inflation expectations on Friday. And market pricing, by the way, Fed is still showing that it's going to cut in May, but these figures, especially CPI on Tuesday, could result in a change in that narrative, at least a little bit. And what about on, on the on the euro side? Because remember, it's euro against the dollar. So these are the significant events for the greenback, significant events for the euro, where it's a coin toss on whether they're going to cut in April, uh, whereas you know heavily pricing in a cut in June. Uh, we do have CEW on Tuesday as well as preliminary GDP on Wednesday. And lastly, when it comes to sentiment, where exactly do traders stand? Majority buy both clients on our end as well as COT speculators, but pulling back significantly for. IG clients, they were in heavy buy 65% at the start of last week, down to just 55%. COT speculators, they were at 64%, just shy of heavy buy territory. And uh, the latest report released last Friday, positioning of last Tuesday, you can see that they dropped from 64 all the way down to 59. That's quite significant for COT speculators. Uh, and it wasn't because they dropped their long positions. They actually raised it, but it's just they raised their short positions even more. And I'm going to plot it onto the chart, uh, the dotted lines corresponding to the left axis as percent long. You can see that when it comes to COT speculators, this is for the weekly time frame. You know, when, when price goes down, you see there's a significant portion of, you know, the momentum guys getting out. And then when price recovers, you did see them go up. But you can see now coming down to, this is quite a low level. We haven't seen these lows in months, uh, th this percentage bias for COT speculators. So going with the momentum a little bit unwinding, but I want to say this unwind has been a bit harsher than, than what we've seen in the past. And when it comes to retail traders, um, what's it called? The majority buy bias, which this is taken for the average of the week. But if you look at it day to day, which is available on the report, a lot of that buy bias was got unwinded because of the small lift off the lows. A lot of those longs that initiated on this move lower towards the lower end of the channel, trying to get out. So that's about it for now. And I do hope you enjoyed this series. If you would like us to cover a certain product, do let us know.